every morning with drive Been on the grind, know I had to survive We had to win Started from the dirt and the rubble I had to be the needle that was popping your bubble Hello and welcome into the Rookie Prospect Profile Series, a Zilla Fantasy Elite production. Today we're going to be looking at wide receiver Javon Baker in the wide receiver machine learning models. So, can Javon Baker rise to the occasion or will he fall short of some people's flag plant expectations as one of these late round gems? Don't miss out on the insights from our advanced algorithms. Javon Baker was drafted number 110 overall by the New England Patriots and they come into the league out of the University of Central Florida via Alabama. So he played his first several seasons at Alabama, transferred to UCF. Had a pretty solid year there, lesser target competition, lesser competition just in general in that particular division. So let's look at his physical traits. He's at six foot one, 202 pounds, so a pretty nice size there for a wide receiver. He did run a 454 in the 40 yard dash, 37 inch vertical, broad jump 121, so not a little bit less explosive than some of these people. He's more in the range of Luke McCaffrey, decent but not great. Breakout age 20 and a half, college dominator rating 31.5, college target share 34, but again, that was at lesser competition at UCF. So let's dive into those first year projections, see what we can find on Javon Baker. Again, he was number 18th drafted wide receiver in the NFL draft in 2024. And we can see him come in here with the 20th ranked mean and median outcome a little bit below where he was drafted in the NFL draft at four and a half range for the mean and median maximum output at 8.56 is pretty poor. We see his minimum range at 13 his maximum at 28. So he's one of those profiles where it's like he's got a higher floor in a lower ceiling, not a huge range of outcomes. His CV at 25.4% was the 12th best in the class. And that's pretty solid in terms of CV, especially for the data sets that we're working with and with this low of number. So I would say this is a pretty highly confident uh, value here for Javon Baker in terms of where he's at and mean and median output and how that's going to go in his first season. So who do we have hovering around the four to five range in their first season as rookies? There's quite a few names to list off here. Uh, doesn't look great in terms of any of those guys and hitting later fantasy success. Looks like the best one here, Curtis Samuel and uh, Zay Jones. Zay Jones at five flat did hit 10.2 in his second season. And we see him come on later on in his career too. Curtis Samuel hit 4.1 in his rookie year, followed by a 10 and a half, 10.7 and 14.14 fantasy points per game. And really the rest of these names do not look good in this range. We're looking at Equinamia St. Brown, Vincent Smith, Deontay Burnett, Donovan Peoples-Jones did almost crest into 10 fantasy points per game. Jalen Strong, Chris Conley never hit his ceiling. Kelvin Harmon, one and done. Albert Wilson, DeAnthony Thomas, Darius Johnson, Tanner McAvoy, Scotty Miller, Justin Hardy, Rashad Green, Trey Tucker, Marvin Mims, rookie season, Keyshawn Johnson, Parky Washington, his rookie season last year, Josh Doxson, not a guy that you want to be compared to, Riley Ridley, Colin Johnson, Kendrick Bourne, Philip Dorsett, Miles Boykin, Ventel Bryant. Curtis Samuel, as I had mentioned, Matt Collins, Brandon Powell, Keelan Doss, Michael Clark. These are all guys in that four to five range. Not very good people to be compared to. What does his ceiling outcome look like as one of the worst ones in the class? Well, not one of the worst at 28, but 8.56. Even if he hits his ceiling, it's not that good of a, a fantasy output, but we're looking in that range, uh, Keelan Cole, 8.3, Rashad, Rashid Shahid 8.38 in his rookie year, Robert Woods, 8.4, Cortland Sutton and Tyrell Williams, 8.5, Traylon Burks, 8.55, Gabe Davis, 8.56, Wandale Robinson, Darius Jennings, Dante Pettis, Kenny Galladay, all at 8.6. And Rashad Bateman, 8.63. Will Fuller, 8.7. Michael Wilson and Jackson Smith and Jigba, 8.81. All in that particular range. And again, this is his ceiling outcome. So if he really goes above and beyond expectations for the model, this is the range of people that you're looking at. Um, and 8.6 certainly isn't that inspiring of a season. So will we see any improvement? Let's 
go look at year two for Javon Baker and see what happens. And again, we still see him kind of hovering around that four and a half range, a slight increase, but there's others in his class who jumped him in this particular uh, year two output. Again, we see minimum 21, maximum output rank 31. So the higher floor, lower ceiling type of prospect here. Getting into that four and a half range in that median outcome. And let's see what type of year two players hit that. Got a couple people at 4.4. Ryan Grant, Bryce Butler, DeAnthony Thomas we see again. Uh, Johnny Holton, Malik Turner, and Ricardo Lewis, and Jalen Strong. Again, we see there all those guys hit four and a half. Lil Jordan Humphrey, 4.53. Jalen Reger, 4.59. Jerron Brown, 4.7. Steven Sims, 4.78. Olamide Zacchaeus, 4.85. Tutu Atwell, 4.86. Marquise Lee, Richard Higgins, 4.9. Paul Richardson, Justin Hardy at 5 flat. All in that range. We do see some repeating names there for the median outcome. This year two maximum output, still less than double digit fantasy points per game at 9.98. That is ranked 31st in the class. Again, pretty disappointing if that's the ceiling that you're looking at. It's a little bit better than Van Jefferson in his second season at 9.89. Brandon Ayuk hit 10.02 in his second season. Jacoby Myers, 10.18. Zay Jones, 10.2. Robert Woods, 10.2. A little bit below that, Quintez Cephas, 9.88. Terrence Williams, 9.8. Nico Collins, 9.71. J.J. Nelson, 9.5. So kind of the range of ceiling output here. Javon Baker not looking like one of these great guys. I know I heard Cody Carpentier say this is kind of like his flag plant guy. He wouldn't be shocked to see him better than Jalen Polk. And I just don't see it here with these particular models. Jalen Polk looked really good in these models. Javon Baker uh, so far not looking so good. Is there any improvement for us in year three? And unfortunately, no. He drops his mean and median down into the three to three and a half range here. Mean at 3.51, median 3.21. Those are the 34th ranked in the class. Again, he was drafted 18th overall, so these are really low down there. Uh, maximum output at 10.54 is 30th best. Not very exciting here, but at least he's crested double digits in the maximum output. Let's go see some names down there in the three to three and a half range. Who hit that in their year three? Assuming they are not very good. So a list of people that uh, you probably didn't want on your squad. Zay Jones, actually, we've seen him a few times here. He's now at uh, in this range. Uh, Kaysen Williams, 2.9. Jerron Brown and Chris Moore, 3.1. Philip Dorsett, 3.2. Kaderil Hodge, Auden Tate, 3.22. Denzel Mims hit 3.29 in his third season. Cody Kaur, Josh Huff, Zay Jones all at 3.5. Chad Beebe, 3.58. Terrace Marshall again, 3.66. KJ Hamler, 3.69. Trey McBride, 3.7. That's Trey McBride, the wide receiver, not Trey McBride, the tight end. Not an inspiring list. Again, we're seeing some repeat names uh, with this profile with Javon Baker, uh, could be following a path similar to those guys. Maximum output finally crested double digits. Uh, Devontae Parker in his third season hit 10. Uh, just below that, Donovan Peoples-Jones, 9.83. Alan Lazard, 9.7. Cortland Sutton, Terrence Williams at 9.6. And Juju Smith-Schuster dropped way down in his third season to 9.4. Uh, D.D. Westbrook, 10.2. Sammy Watkins, 10.4. Christian Kirk, 10.46, Jamison Crowder, 10.6, and Josh Palmer, 10.67. So we're getting into this list of people cresting that 10 fantasy points, but they're sitting at about 65th best in the last 11 draft classes for the people that even got to year three in terms of their rank here. And that's his maximum output. Not very inspiring. Will we see a year four breakout for Javon Baker? Yeah, we see him jump up a little bit here into the 6.13, 6.24 median range. Uh, you like to see the jump up into year four, but again, six fantasy points per game. That's not moving the needle. And yet again, in year four, we see 16th ranked minimum, 29th ranked maximum. He's really more of the higher floor, low ceiling type. 
not a guy that you're going to want on your fantasy squad. Unless the high floor is, you know, 15 and the low ceiling is in the 16, 17 range, you're good. But when your your low range is in the three fantasy points and your upper range is in the eight, that's not somebody that you're going to want on your fantasy squad. I'm perfectly fine not taking Javon Baker in my rookie draft. Just take running backs who will get a better opportunity for solo work should there be any injuries ahead of him. The thing about Javon Baker this year for two is he's the top 10 in CV, 28.7. So it's pretty confident in these results, um, even with this jump up. Let's go look at that six range for people, the 10 range for maximum, and let's get out of this profile because I am not interested in drafting this guy. Bit above and below this, uh, 5.7, Jordan Matthews and Chris Conley. 5.8, we have Russell Shepard. 5.9, Justin Hunter. At six, we have Quentin Patton, Jerron Brown, and Alex Erickson. 6.07, we have Nick Westbrook-Akine. Isaiah McKenzie hit 6.22. 6.3 was Tajay Sharp. 6.4, we have Dante Moncrief and Marquise Goodwin. So that's the average output here for year four. These aren't guys that are going to be moving the needle on your fantasy squad. Even if he hits the 10.3 fantasy points per game, that's Marques Wilson and Nelson Aguilar in their fourth season. Mike Williams hit 10.25. Michael Gallup, 10.17. Chosen, Robbie Anderson hit 10 flat. Alan Hearns, 9.9. Sammy Watkins, 9.8. A little bit above that, we have uh, 10.5. Kenny Stills, Deontay Johnson, 10.67. Marquise Lee, 11.2. T. Higgins, 11.47. Russell Gage, 11.64. So that's the range of outcomes if he hits his ceiling in year four. By that time, you're probably off of your fantasy squad after disappointing in those first three seasons. And this isn't enough of a breakout for me to want to warrant picking him up in any case. So hopefully you learned a little bit about Javon Baker in this particular profile. Some people flag planting him, saying he could supplant Jalen Polk. The machine learning model here does not see that. So that's going to do it for today's rookie prospect profile on Javon Baker. This is presented by Zilla Fantasy Elite. Thanks for tuning in.